Hello and welcome back to another episode of Battletech. My name is Eichel and today we're going to continue the Swan Song campaign, a pirate themed campaign uh, where we are playing on the literal hardest difficulty in order to uh, survive in the uh, grim, grim um, future of the Battletech universe. Today it's time for unexpected guests, a three school mission. So we're working our way all the way up to the sweet, sweet three and four school missions. We're okay on money, so I'll pick salvage. Gives us a hundred grand, but even uh, more importantly, it gives us quite a bit of salvage. The pirates will love us after this one, and maybe we're going for 418 instead of all because that will get us all the way to liked, which is just enough to get um, higher max contract difficulty, but also I think access to the black market under the right circumstances. So you can see we have a few slightly injured uh, mechs, but nothing that we couldn't deal with. Lily and Bradford still inspired, that's great. And the others are doing fine as well. So let's directly deploy and see how this mission is going to play out. Let's deploy the mission. Lily, Bradford, Mox and Hawkbite are at it once again. And what's even our mission? I think we gotta escort someone, right? Mm-hmm. A good sip of tea and let's dive into it so it appears that we gotta escort someone potentially like hmm oh i remember that map so the escort is running all the way down here and then on the other side huh. that is one of the escort maps that you don't want to take because there are about 1500 spots on the map where enemies will ambush you Yeah, pretty sure it was uh, through here. Copy that. Okay, so our trusted pirate friends need us for an escort. The irony behind it, when the pirates that are typically the ones that are ambushing the escorts finally need an escort themselves. <laughs> I absolutely like escort missions in general because they are fun. I like it when you play alongside kind of an AI. Uh, my by far favorite missions are kind of two versus twos, I would call that when you plus another lance are deploying and then you just have so much more strategy. Those missions take a little bit longer on average because too many um, units are on the field, <clears throat> but those battles are so fantastic. If you can, for instance, use your colleagues as a meat shield, your mechs are not getting shot. You can nicely sit in the back and someone else is taking the beating for once. Okay, destroy enemy reinforcements already suggests, which I hate, that there will be more than one enemy pack. But given that we have, I think, 18 salvage, might not be the worst thing. Last time that I played the map, first pack came from here, and then whilst we're almost all the way down here, there was another lance that like uh, ambushed us from behind. And why I don't like this map is you can, you might want to go like down there. But the minor advantage of that ice cold water really doesn't outweigh the massive disadvantage of fighting uphill. All right. Waiting on you. Good. Commander. Mox takes the first step. 
just because I think that that is a reasonable idea. Multi-target. Nah, we're not going to get the bulldog down. Might as well just fully go for the striker here. There we go. One vehicle down. Reporting vehicle destroyed. Go. Vindicator moves up. Got it. Bit of vigilance here. And let's yeah, the, hit the LRM can. carrier. Three LRM 20s. Holy moly. Commander. Locking in coordinates. Locking on target. That's an advantage of just having. Uh, non-mobile platforms like the uh, the vehicles as it essentially offers you an option to load much more weapon uh, weapons in there those guys typically have like twice or thrice the capacity uh, the disadvantage of them is that they are much 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 more vulnerable Snub PPCs are dual shot PPCs. Pretty dangerous if not being taken care of correctly. On the move. Hunchback moves up. Yeah, let's kill this guy. Reporting. Enemy so far we've only gotten a few weapons. Unfortunately you can't really loot vehicles. Which is something that uh, that mods like BTA and uh, Rogue Tech in particular changed, uh, where you also can have a tiny amount of vehicles accompanying your land. I think it's a neat concept. It gives you uh, the option to uh, to just splice them into your lands. Of course, they're not as good as um, Mac Warriors because battle max or the best weapon platform but it's fine uh, it's nice i think it was an advanced if i don't want to speak out of order but if my memory serves me well it uh, was kind of an advanced setting Moving where out. later in the campaign with no rogue tech when you've built up your lance a bit further Auto you could actually deploy some extra vehicles that that would help you so that is nice let's wait for all of uh, the vehicles to catch up and then we are ready to go might as well fall back later. just Moving a tiny out. bit so that they can actually Roger catch that. up position confirmed Good. The next um, ambush potentially happens from the right hand side. So far we've been incredibly lucky to just fight against four heavier weapon platforms. They ain't got nothing on us. Moving to position. On my way. And the APCs here, contrary to the Bulldogs that you've seen, are also not real tanks. They are kind of more mobile uh, buggies, for, for the lack of a better word. So they don't have a lot of armor themselves. I copy. Good, fantastic. Please don't tell me that that is the entire mission. This would be so incredibly disappointing to fight against. Just four weapon platforms and then that is that. I get you. On the move. On the move. We're moving deep into the forest. Good work, Commander. Hold this position until the package is underway. Alright. 
complete shocker that we're going to be ambushed yet again. The enemy, though, does not seem to be doing a really good job uh, in being on time. Like, these units will be out next turn. But the positive part is I'm seeing two heavy mags. Got it. Hmm. for the shot. Okay, I cool. Hear ya. Oh, but moves up. Ready for orders. Oh, so they want to come over here. I see how it is. I see how it is. Well, hmm, how do we deal with that? Acknowledged. Hunchback braces. Receiving you. And the Griffin is potentially the only one that could fully act. Trying to hit the enemy Griffin. Waiting for orders. No problem. Centurion. We got an evac zone, but we do not have enough dead uh, mech parts. So far, we only got a few weapons. Well, thank you. Of course, as always, the initiative resets just to annoy us, which means those guys can reposition. We can't. Centurion. How do we deal with that situation? Let's just move over and continue to pepper the Griffin. So far that worked out fantastic. Let's put the rest on reserve for now. Again, reserve. These guys who seem to be a bit lost with the terrain and need to move all the way back. Those few missiles do not mean anything to me. What can I do for you? Lily moves up. What are we dealing with? Oh, an Orion and a Capifrag. The Orion would be fantastic if we could get that guy. It's good mech. Heavy Fract is also not bad. Two good mechs. Uh, let's get some Vigilance going so that we're acting first next turn. And the Griffin definitely is our main target. Got something you want done? Position confirmed. Hunchback, Redboard, Vigilance. And let's light this guy up like a little Christmas tree.
Good. Griffin moves over. We're going for faster initiative next turn. Very good. Very good. No need for a precise shot if you have the high ground and are so much faster than the enemy. What we need to do though is let's also appreciate that they will retaliate. So Yes, Commander. We're using the positioning absolutely to our advantage. Okay, the Phoenix Hawk has opened the fight yet again. Holy yeah. shit, okay, cool. Interesting maneuver. I was honestly not expecting that that would happen. Be there in a chip. Let's precision strike him nonetheless. Not a great chance to hit it, but if we hit it well enough, he will Gas. lose his protect, uh, his evasion. Well, coordinates received. Lily has inspiration, so might as well use that. Uh huh. Unfortunately, the guy still has a lot of ready for order. A lot of movement blips on him. Location confirmed. Moving up, we're not running out of missiles anytime soon. Might as well take the entire shot. And slowly but surely his evasion becomes less and less of a problem. Hawkbite. Yeah, don't need that. Let's just try to hit him. Good. We're almost in territory where there is a good chance to actually hit him. Let's find an unobstructed line. 40%, 50... What was that? Let's see, it's 50%. Fantastic, okay. Hunchback moves down. Red board takes the 70 percent shot and that's what we've prepped the guy for fantastic structure exposed he's also almost overheated is that it i'm barely scratched he has an advantageous position i'm not going to lie about that but We most certainly have the better uh, take on him because he's fighting one versus four. And eventually he ran out of evasion blips, right? Ouch. That hurt a lot. Happy Fract uh, moves up. Sixty-five percent chance to hit. Seventy-five percent. Okay, let's move Moving over here. Position. Stabilizing ourselves. Got it. And they come in one at a time. For the time, that is the best that could happen to us. Move on out. Lock 
Fantastic, because now all of his defensive abilities are gone. And he's essentially helpless. Let's go with Mox again. Move order received. And let's continue hitting that cat uh, cataphract. Boy oh boy, these guys are sturdy. Look at his stamina, he's still standing. On my way. Hunchback moves down. Finally, a good, solid critical hit. Time to hit and hurt him even more. Good to go. Doesn't want to seem to go down. Vigilance, definitely. Yeah, there's no point in precision striking him. Might as well just strike him normally. Luckily, we have minus 40% damage reduction. So this here, hopefully, hopefully, will be a fatal hit. Uh, wait a second. Let's choose the leg. I'm still hoping we might be able to not destroy the uh, central core torso. But that unfortunately happened. Indicator braces moves back. Centurion braces. We're we're regaining so much heat for free. Good to go. Got something you want done? Acknowledged. Good, fantastic. Let's wait here yeah. for a bit. What can I do you for? Coordinates received. All right, that guy hopefully comes in range, almost. Waiting for orders. Orders. Good, entrancing. Yep. Everybody just waits for it. Location confirmed. When he hits, right it'll be hard. So let's get ready. No this guy seems to be to walking up. Oh, it's okay. Standing by. Affirmative. Commander. Bit of a cat and mouse game here.
All right, Vindicator is in trouble. Like What's up, boss? So, how do we deal with the Orion? Moving out. So, for one. Be there. Let's just start hitting him really well. He only has a thousand two hundred armor. That is not that much. We will be able to act before he can act, so right, might as well make use of it. He got one strike, yeah. and now it's our turn. Now, I'm gonna make the spring. Quite a bit of armor, I'm not going to lie. Scary amounts of armor. But we're eventually going to get through it. There we go, the first kinks in the armor uh, can be seen. The guy has 40% damage reduction. Certainly helps him with not taking any damage. Let's try to get his torso down. 31 hit, uh, 31 hit points left on that piece. Good to go. Move on out. Yeah, why not? Let's try to hit hit him and destroy half of his force. There we go, that was fantastic. That hit something good. LRM's gone, SRM's gone. Pilot injured. Okay. Twenty-two hit points. That's potentially not that great. So that here is like what left arm. Okay. We're showing the right arm. Vigilance for forty percent reduction. Automatically targeting the weak zones. Okay, fantastic. Another explosion. Find it completely out of options. And now the guy is going to try to melee us. Good to go. Got it. Commander. Let him come a bit closer. He'll try to do whatever he can in order to just melee attack us. Commander? We, on the other hand, can do or will do whatever it takes to stay out of range. Okay. Full speed it is. All right, let's give him a taste of what's uh, of what's waiting. Pilot incapacitated. That's fantastic because that means we can salvage the Mission entire successful. Orion. Orion uh, can be a good mech. Uh, you've uh, seen just how much it can tank. So if we could get the entire Orion, I would slot that in for something else any day of the week. Good, we got to almost likable status. Fantastic, look at that. Orion, Orion, Orion. 75 tons. Cadifrac, 70 tons. 
Yes, guys, that is our first medium mech. Uh, heavy mech. Mediums, we got a lot. And we got ourselves an Orion. That is so... So good, because we finally will uh, get more tonnage. Very good. Orion K is ready to fight. So we either got the Griffin here, which is good. I don't want to send him to storage. Or we got the Shadowhawk here, which is so and so. Let's send him to store. Well, he, the way that we built him, I still find the Shadowhawk decent. Problem is, it also takes a lot of time to build all of those up. So let's send him to the storage. That will allow us to work on the Orion. 75 tons. Mwah. Fantastic. Good. Hard points. We're looking at four laser hard points, two, um, uh, two missile hard points. and a lot of armor like if you look at the entire armor durability is fantastic 1400 if we build it right okay cool and it even has a ballistic hard point on top that's not too bad okay so let's start with the obvious things we don't uh, we want really maximum damage it's going to be a brawler the whole thing is built nicely around that. So if we were to take like this here, of course heat efficiency isn't great. Firepower would be 190. If we take the LBX 10 on top, then we're looking at what? 276. That is not bad guys. Specifically since the engagement distance of uh, this bad boy is relatively high. So ammunition, LBX 10, 10 shots, okay. Then SRMs, 100, that's 8 shots, give them more. Uh, the only thing that stinks is our heat, of course. So how do we deal with that? Hmm. Let's give it a couple of heat sinks. And what we could do is we could reduce the weapon edge a tiny bit. Like that's 260, which is still respectable. That's 10. Thinning out the ammunition a bit, so that's 10 times 10, which is good. Just for full clarity, we should get another LBX 10 ammunition. Oh, 44,000, are you kidding me? Well. New equipment available. This here is not fantastic in order uh, in terms of buying stuff. So this loadout here is running hot, quite hot. We're at a deficit of 40. We're heat sinking a tiny bit more. It's still running, relatively speaking, hot. But it wouldn't be too bad. Hmm. So if we were getting rid of this 
the damage would drop quite substantially. We could go for another heatsink. Yeah, I don't know. The only problem with this chassis is it has two little hard points, right? So uh, wasting one is nothing that I would like to do. We could also go for a full LRM uh, 20 uh, kind of missile boat, but that would definitely deal less damage. Uh, I think we're on the right track uh, with the way that it's built. It just means we gotta scrape off a bit of armor here and there and be more energy efficient also not getting hit from behind so that's like what uh, heat deficit we could um, disable some of the lasers to get a better heat uh, ratio Com compensating 42 is good it's a decent number this setup would definitely be difficult on a hotter planet in terms of equipment in terms of equipment does that take time yeah it takes time no, we don't want to uh, put in extra time but that's stability damage uh, putting that into the arms not too bad would give us some more melee reasons because if we're overheating and then we're like punching someone in the face that that would be great hmm yeah i think overall it's fine the firepower is unmatched with anything that we do have so far i'm a bit concerned about the heat to be honest this weapon producing such an amount of heat? 10. Now it's the medium lasers that are just creating that amount of heat. But yeah, without better heat sinks um, or a heat bank, there is not that much we can do. Certainly, um, the loss tech that will reduce the overall heat would be helpful here. But yeah, we just gotta live with the fact that the Orion will not be uh, the best in terms of stomaching heat. We got 29 days. And I think we're done with the contracts here. Yeah, we didn't want to do anything else. So we got 29 days. Might as well, uh, in terms of Mac Warriors, that's do the, the whole hygiene stuff first. Redford cannot level up yet. Um, Hogbite, more weapon hit is good. Gunnery good go. definitely works out well. Can't level her yet. Can't level Mox. Too bad she's so close. Um, to getting bulwark she's the on, only mech that just doesn't have bulwark at the moment in terms of repair three days here i think that's a no-brainer and one day there that's also a no-brainer so for 17 days Let's do the Orion first. So that's 20 days until we get the Orion. The Griffin would be nice to have as well. So 30 something days. Let's take a look at our navigation. Is there anything that is attractive? 17 days, not too bad. What is the underlying system? 
uh, looking like that's two and a half stars just what we need plus a flashpoint so that would be optimal this here is the follow-up uh, from the Bauman, uh, Bauman group rare items and Darius would would uh, would be our employer on this one so that does that does look like an option for us as well the challenge of the underlying system is neglectable but we would be visiting a lot of planets in between and we could fly up here next so why not um, let's take that move and afterwards we're flying up By your command. The drive upgrade is complete. That means our ship looks even better. In terms of next steps, we could increase buildings for morale. Might as well want to do that. The launch always gives you nice uh, options. And then afterwards, I'm contemplating uh, the idea of having a second mech bay. I build those typically a bit later in the game. Um, mainly because the upkeep just explodes as soon as you have a second one of those and if you manage your mechs well in one bay there is not that much of a problem however it also gives you three additional uh, tech points so whole mech repairs are being faster and you get the advanced repair systems and so on so it really does make sense Overall, oh, holy shit, we just got uh, gained um, an LRM fifteen plus plus with extra stability damage. Thank you, Tigan. Your support is appreciated. good so plus two that means we're clocking up uh, to 40 morale having that little upgrade now gives it it gives us even 41 those upgrades you asked for are online commander Good, that's another plus one morale. These are one-time costs, uh, but their average cost will be low. So essentially this is, yeah, purchasing one morale for 450,000. Not the best trade, but it's okay. That requires better port. And that one requires also better port. And that requires beta port as well. Yeah, a lot of it requires upgrading our habitat ports. Training facility could be an option. This one here isn't bad either. Just for that steady training whilst you're flying. But I think the next one that we're going to build out is actually that mech bay. Just got a stomach with 45,000. And as a nice side effect, we can have more mechs in our mech bay.
Good. We're almost there. All right, a completely remote system, but it is hunting season. And next time we're going to do exactly that, opening the hunting season. We got some rotor parts here. Yeah, unfortunately, none of them will complete any of any of our mechs. Medium plus lasers, not bad. I like the accuracy ones. Uh, they are typically good. They help specifically at the beginning of uh, the campaign to make sure that you are uh, that you're hitting well. So maybe if we have a bit of money left over, we could buy it. 88,000 is steep. Black market here uh, that you can see, uh, we require pirate connections in order to do that. In terms of contracts, I would take a wild guess that other than the flashpoint, not much is happening here. Because it's a half school system, I think the hardest mission would be kind of one and a half schools, and that's a little bit too less for us. I mean, the one thing that I could do is I could use this here in order to, yeah, boost up the reputation uh, with the pirates. Having two pirate missions isn't the worst the loot of uh, these missions will uh, not be worth uh, worthwhile but we could earn some money like 600,000 here and 250 here that's not too bad this mission here is a great one I'm not going to play it but it's actually quite fun the B team you get a complete lance of like strangers and you can only deploy one of your mech warriors Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a good uh, moment for us to pause. Morale looks good. Uh, the overall company looks good from a reputation perspective. We might need that little extra bit to um, start working with the pirates. Free World League uh, seems to like us. The uh, Draconis Combine starts to like us. Iron Commonwealth uh, starts to like us. And um, consequently, Capellian and Federated Sons and Magistry starts to dislike us. So that is more or less kind of the standard that you're uh, seeing. You, you will be working more and more with uh, some factions, those in this case, and the others will be on the receiving end. So that's fine. It is what it is. Welcome to Engineering, Commander. Happy to be here. Good. Fantastic. Upgrade is in progress. Everything's working well, which brings us to the end of this mission. Guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate your support. If you like uh, the content, please leave a like and a comment down below. And see you in two days. Bye-bye.